and welcome to another daily devotion. As we look at obscure laws of scripture, why they're in there, what their meaning is. Now, you've heard the term, uh, so they needed a scapegoat. And it's usually somebody who takes the fall for somebody else's mistakes. Well, in Israel, every year, the priest would gather the entire host of Israel, all the people in the community, and he'd bring out two goats. The first goat was sacrificed for all the sins that people had named and pointed out and confessed to God. So all the sins of the people, and it would be a communal cleansing of the people, and the blood of that first goat would be taken. But then there'd be a second goat. And you can look this up. Look up scapegoat in the Bible, because that's where it comes from. Scapegoats, and that phrase comes from Scripture. That first sacrifice of confessed sins, that, that blood would go on to another goat. And this goat would carry the blood of confession of all the sins that had never been spoken or repented of. People, sins that people had forgot to ask God's forgiveness for, sins that people had hidden from each other, things that people had thought but not acted on. And that goat was to be sent out into the wilderness, into chaos, into the unknown, where it would inevitably eventually be killed as well, as a living sacrifice, carrying away, quite literally, the sins of the community and cleansing it. This scapegoat would carry everyone else's sins outside of Israel for Israel to be pure again. So it's, it's really interesting because throughout the Hebrew Bible, we have this idea of the, the letting of blood. And, and I think it's probably really more accurate to think about the, the life essence of a thing giving, being given back to God. And as that life essence is spilled, realizing how precious that is, that something has... Um, given the gift of life that other things might live. So, you know, in terms of presidents, bodyguards might, Secret Service might step in front of a bullet and take it that the leader of our country would live. That same kind of idea of dying in the place of another. So when you see all the hymns and, and some of the gospels that frame Jesus's life, and death on the cross as an atonement, we get this idea that something uh, unblemished, something perfect, in this case, uh, the Lamb of God, as John's gospel says, the Lamb of God who, what does John the Baptist say at the shores of the Jordan, takes away the sins of the world. Well, where do we get that idea? Way back to ancient Israel, the goats that are sacrificed to take away the sins of the community. The blood of the lamb that's painted on the doors as the angel of death passes over in Egypt, marking the doors with blood to remind the angel that this is the people of God and that that blood would protect, has been given for the life of a people. So that same kind of blood theology. Here's, here's the thing I would challenge all of us today is, Intrinsic in that is a violence that something has to be killed in order for God to give life and restoration. Luke's gospel does not frame Christ's death as an atonement, but as a forgiveness. You might say, well, what the heck's the difference? He dies in both cases for our sins. Yes. Here's the difference in a nutshell. In atonement, uh, let's say you... You've owe me a debt. Let's believe me, we're pretending here. Let's say I'm God and you're me, and you owe me three hundred trillion dollars in wrongs that you can never pay back. So I have uh, my son or my daughter take your debt on, and in their death, they forgive everything you owed me in a way you could not pay. They have atoned substituted, taken your place, and the debt is paid through them. We have songs like Jesus paid it all. Okay, that's where that comes from. 
But forgiveness, let's say you owe me that same $300 trillion. There's no way in a million years you can repay it. And I say to you as a divine, again, pretending now, pretending. If I were God, though, you can't repay me that, and I recognize that. You are, you are a creature, I'm the divine. And God says, but because it's me who is owed the debt, I also have the power to say, you don't owe me a cent. I forgive the debt because of how I love you, because of my forgiveness or grace in you. You don't owe me a thing. I'm the injured party, but I forgive you. Wow. Atonement, forgiveness. Two different ways that sacrifice is framed in Scripture, all rooted in sacrifice and scapegoat theology. An obscure law that has a lot of weight today, still in the church. Who'd for thought this obscure, this week of obscure Bible laws? I hope you learned something as much as I have. Thanks for joining us on Daily Devotions. 